Hello, this is Buona from Buona.tv and today I'm going to talk about the iPhone and the iPod Touch. Most notably, I'm going to talk about how you should proceed if you want to jailbreak or unlock. And I, I made a video a few days ago talking about this very same subject, but I was cautioning people to wait. Well, not 24 hours, 48 hours after I made that video. The dev team released Ponish Tool 2.2 and Quick Pwn 2.2 to basically support this new iPhone and iPod Touch firmware. Now there's several things to consider with this uh, and they posted these uh, they posted these directions on their website uh, blog.iphone-dev.org I believe it is. And um, I'm just going to quickly go through what those are and then I'm going to quickly demonstrate how to use I'm going to use quick pwn because that's the situation that I'm in and it's going to be several ifs if then statements here the first one uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the baseband the baseband is the software on the iPhone and this has nothing to do with the iPod touch uh, this is the software on the iPhone that they manipulate to unlock the iPhone to use with any cur any carrier with the 2.2 upgrade the baseband was updated so if you've already updated your iPhone to 2.2, then you have a brand new baseband. Uh, the problem with that is that whenever there's a new baseband, it takes the iPhone dev team some time to figure out how to unlock it so that you can use it with T-Mobile if you want to. So the first warning that they've given is that, well, if you have an iPhone 3G, and uh, this, this applies to the 3G, if you have an iPhone uh, 3G and you want to unlock it in the near future, then you shouldn't update to 2.2 using iTunes. And I'm gonna go through all these different ways of updating in a minute. So that's the first thing. So if you have a locked iPhone and you plan to unlock it in the near future, they recommend that you use Ponage Tool. What Ponage Tool will do is that it will preserve the baseband. Now you need to do this when you're already at 2.1. If you've already upgraded to 2.2 and your baseband is already upgraded and you can't unlock until they come out with another fix. So if you have a locked iPhone 3G, now listen closely, if you have a locked iPhone 3G right now in at and and you plan to eventually unlock it in the next couple of months, use Ponage Tool to create a custom firmware file or custom DMG file or what is it, the extension, I forgot. Create a custom one and uncheck uh, enable or update baseband in the software because that will bypass that and then you can go ahead and update your iPhone without to the latest 2.2 software but you'll keep your baseband intact so you'll be able to run unlocks in the future. Now if you have an unlocked, I, I'm, I'm sorry, if you have a locked iPhone like I do right now, uh, in that case um, and you have a locked iPhone and you already updated the 2.2 or you don't care about unlocking in the near future unlocking is a year maybe two years off or you're not even thinking about unlocking then go ahead and use quick pwn quick pwn will go ahead and update your iPhone to the latest 2.2 and jailbreak it and add Cydia and installer so those are the main two cases for the iPhone 3G now the next case is for the iPhone 2G and uh, the first generation iPhone, they just say use Quick Pwn for that. Also, uh, moving on to the iPod Touch. iPod Touch is not really supported with Quick Pwn 2.2 and uh, Punish Tool 2.2. What was essentially supported is the first generation iPod Touch. The second generation iPod Touch, there is no support just yet. So in my case, what I've done, and this is my scenario only, is that I have already updated to 2.2 using iTunes and that has already upgraded my baseband to the latest and I don't care about unlocking I mean the only time I'm going to care about unlocking is if I want to sell the iPhone which I don't see happening in the next year or two <laughs> so that's why I went ahead and updated and I didn't really care so what I'm going to do now and I'm going to show you guys is I'm going to run quick pwn which is a very simple process shouldn't take that long I'm going to run quick pwn on my iPhone 3G and I'm going to go ahead and jailbreak it right now from a stock hello this is Buona from Buona.tv and I'm back again uh, with the uh, iPhone 3G 2.2 jailbreak uh, like I said in the uh, previous segment I'm going to run quick pwn to uh, jailbreak my iPhone 3G it's a fairly painless process and uh, I'm just gonna go over here to quick pwn and it's launching the application now and um, 
it pops up the the all too familiar interface and uh, it says copyright iPhone dev team and uh, be warned so the next step it says please connect your device so I'm gonna start my iPhone um, recording my iPhone as well and I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in now and uh, iPhone is now plugged in uh, set that down and it says uh, we'll automatically test it and then we'll move to the next step so I'm gonna click OK and it has detected an iPhone 3G and now it's moving on to the next step now QuickPone is doing all this automatically it says we'll now search the firmware bundles if QuickPone cannot find the correct file we'll try to download it and now it's found it <laughs> And it says, would you like to replace the original boot and restore logos? Now, these logos, the original boot and restore logos are the Apple logo. And the restore logo, I believe, is an Apple logo with a progress bar. Um, what they do with QuickPone and with Ponage Tools, that they replace the boot logo with a, with a pineapple. And a restore logo with a, a fun-looking Steve Jobs character. I, I think he's saying something in Russian. I, I can't quite make out the language. I'm quite sure you guys will correct me. But I'm not going to replace my logos. I'm going to keep my Apple logo. So I'm going to say no. And now it begins to build an IPSW. So it says QuickPone is preparing the software that will be used to modify your iPhone 3G. So now is the process where I wait for QuickPone to do its thing. And it's going to ask me for my administrator username and password to do some things. I completely trust it. And it's telling me to turn off the connected device. And I'm going to slide to power off. See that? And then it's going to tell me to do some other things. Let me get my hands in the picture. Prepare to press the home and power buttons in five seconds. I'm pressing the home and power buttons. See? Both of them are depressed. And I'm going to keep holding these for 10 seconds. And then I'm going to let go of the power button right now. And now I'm going to hold this button for 10 seconds. And QuickPone is showing me how to do all that. And it's doing its thing. As you can see, QuickPone is now sending things to the iPhone. And I'm going to set that down there. And you can see the logo going now. And now QuickPone is now sending a, a small DMG, a 22, uh, 22 megabyte around thereabouts DMG. And iTunes just launched over here. It says detected an iPhone in recovery mode, which is what that process was. By holding down the power button and the home buttons in that sequence, you're putting your iPhone in uh, in recovery mode, which is how these jailbreaks happen. So um, I'm not going to touch the iPhone just yet. I'll let this send this do its thing. and it's sending 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 and the name really really holds well quick pwn doesn't require a lot on your behalf that part that i just did is probably the hardest thing you'll do because uh compared to ponish tool ponish tool requires a lot more interaction uh, you'll have to actually manually uh create the file and then some in some cases browse to it quick pwn handles all of that does it all in one fell swoop and like I said since uh, my iPhone is locked and I don't care about unlocking it in the near future this is the route to take with 2.2 uh, iPhone firmware 2.2 now it's sending kernel cache dot release dot SL5 L8 8900 X dot 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 it says quick phone has is modifying your device this process will allow the custom firmware other cool tweaks to be performed in the future this process may take a while and the iPhone 3G will reboot itself don't do anything to it until the reboot has happened quick phone will now say I has success yeah. <laughs> you can see the the logo over here it's switching to the iPhone now it's uh flashing the nor no war and uh, this is the little pineapple guy 
I can has pineapple. And uh, like I said, I'm recording two videos in the in sequence so I can do a little better job than I did the Ponish Tool video. And it takes a little while, so I'll put it back down. But you can see that says flashing nor nor. I can zoom in a little bit here. See if it'll yay! It is focusing as it should. So while this is happening, I just want to re-emphasize the stuff that I said earlier. If you bought an unlock iPhone already, yeah, if you bought something that was already unlocked, um, I don't think I said this before, but if you bought an iPhone like from eBay or you paid an extra to get it from someone unlocked, you don't have to worry about all those warnings I said before about Quick Pwn versus Ponish Tool. You can just use Quick Pwn because the phone's already unlocked. The, the baseband is already set to be unlocked, so you don't have to really worry about that stuff. So if you paid extra, you definitely have earned your money's worth. You have less to worry about. And now it's going to reboot. I'm going to stop the video now and start it back real quick. Okay, it's still rebooting. My poor Canon PowerShot TX1 can only take... Uh, so big a video at a time. I think it's limited to uh, I want to say 12 minutes or something like that because of a file size limitation. I don't know what it is, but I know I always seem to meet it when I don't want to meet it. <laughs> so rather than than meet it by accident, I just uh, find good points to stop the video and start it again. I can always uh, I can always combine the two parts. But enough of that. We're not here to talk about video. This is all about jailbreaking your iPhone. Oh, another cool thing you guys may have saw today um, is that there's a hack out that allows you to use Japanese emoji icons. These are very cool little icons. There's a hack out that allows you to use those anywhere. So you can use them in SMS, you can use them in email, you can use them in... I've, I've seen people use them on Twinkle, on Twitter. So that's another incentive to jailbreak. Emoji icons, there's a ton of them. Really cute little icons. You'll love them. <laughs> so I'm jailbroken. And uh, let me zoom back out here with my camera. And as you can see, I've got my iPhone now with a new icon in the form of City. So now I'm officially jailbroken on my iPhone 3G. And uh, emails updating and everything. So that concludes this video, and I hope this process helped you. Um, it's very easy to use QuickPone, not a whole lot of, lot to show. There was more to talk about in terms of when to use QuickPone and when to use Ponage Tool. And remember, if you have an iPhone 3G and you want to eventually unlock it, I mean, you want to unlock it in the near future, then don't use QuickPone, use Ponage Tool. But if you're like me and you don't care about unlocks and uh, you're not going to unlock, <laughs> the next year then go ahead use quick pwn and uh, update your iphone 2.2 as normal it will update your baseband and you have to wait for the dev team to come out with official jailbreak and again iphone ipod touch i'm sorry the new next generation ipod touches are not supported yet with punish 2 and quick pwn so you have to wait on those uh all the other scenarios i've covered all right this is one from TV, and that concludes this jailbreaking session of my iPhone 3G on 2.2 firmware. Take care.